Hello, Booktube, and um, uh, Brandy will be here as soon as possible. Um, she's running a bit late, so uh, but I thought I'd wait as long as I could. Uh, gonna start doing or try to do a sort of weekly reads as of uh, for Sunday, and uh, so uh, yeah, give it a try rather than a Friday reads, uh, call it a Sunday reads or weekly reads. Um, let's see here. Hello. Can you see me okay? Yeah, and we're live because it's uh, uh, five past. <laughs> okay, I'm late. <laughs> Let me lay out here that works a little better. Yeah, that works a little better, I think. So we've got Aaron is here. Hi, Aaron. And Jenny is here saying chop, chop. Hi, <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> so I was just saying that uh, instead of doing a Friday reads, go try a Sunday reads or weekly reads on Sunday for uh, if you see how, how often you need to do it. Okay, um, so uh, d you did a birthday haul for your books, didn't you? No, not really, because uh, I didn't get anything until sort of recently. recently oh, that's now. right. That's right. I remember it was already after your birthday. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, do you wanna do you wanna start, or do you wanna uh, wait a little bit? I'm like, how late am I? Five minutes. <laughs> yeah, six minutes now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, no, you go ahead. And you know, you can start with what you've been reading. Uh, we're going to go back to the beginning of the month. Um, cause yeah. We this, so, yeah. So, yeah. Well, all right. Well, I will start then. So, uh, the first book, book I read was Meg. Meg. <laughs> now, so, okay. Um, uh, I don't know if Aaron and Jenny has seen um, me talk about Jaws before, my read of Jaws. But I absolutely hated Jaws. It was like one of the worst books I've ever read in my entire life. I hated it so much, so much. Um, part of my problem with that book was I, I loved the movie, Jaws. The movie was fabulous, still holds up to this day. And I went into the book expecting the literary equivalent of the movie. And no, not even close. It was just absolutely horrible. So um, recently I saw like an advertisement for the Meg movie. And I watched the movie and I was like, wow, that movie was pretty good. I mean, it was not Jaws, but it was fun. I liked it. There was some cool shark action in it, you know, uh, and I knew it was a book. So, and I knew I had the book somewhere. So I dug the book out and read it. It was really short, a fast read. And uh, the book was not as good as the movie, but it was okay. It was okay. It was a lot different from the movie, but it was still okay. And then turns out there's also like a prequel to this book and it's a short story. So I read that too. It was awful. <laughs> um, okay, Sean, how many books are you talking about? We can go back and forth or do you want me to talk about my... Continue. <laughs> okay. I can't remember how many books you read. I think it was two, but... Um, and then I read, I got on a turtle kick. I, I do not know what got me down this turtle path, but I started looking up all this information about turtles online and I got all carried away with turtles. So I read of Time and Turtles, uh, Mending the World, Shell by Shattered Shell by Cy Montgomery. And um, this was disappointing. This did not scratch my turtle itch. It was fine. It was okay, but it didn't have the level of information that I was really looking for about turtles. It was um it was much more just um kind of a journalistic style piece you know so um it was fine you know if you're into saving turtles this would be a great book to read but well, it doesn't it have talk about, did it talk about the earth was sitting on top of the back of a turtle no that was it that was the next turtle book i read <laughs> that was the next one on the backs of turtles where it's turtles all the way down <laughs> So, yeah, but, you know, this one also had some good photos in it. I'll show one of the, wait, was this the one? Yeah, this was the one. I really liked some of the photos in this. Let's see. Very cuddly, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's 
So, oh, look, there's a baby turtle hatching. Did I show that one? Turtles are really, really cute. You have to admit. Oh, there's the author with the turtle. She was like working in a turtle. Um, oh, what do you call it when they take turtles that have been injured to a place and then they rehabilitate them and then re release them back into the wild? Uh, one of those. A what? Sank turtle sanctuary. Yeah, turtle sanctuary. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. I was like, "What's the word for that?" <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's where she was. She was working in the, in that turtle sanctuary, uh, for a while. She even like traveled to some Arctic region to um, help turtles, you know, to help perpetuate their laying of eggs and stuff like that. But yeah, it was it was okay though. It was it was it's not a turtle whisperer. A turtle whisperer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um. Yeah. It just it just wasn't what I was looking for. We, All got right, do you flood, wanna... we got a flood of uh, comments here. I mean, a flood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, Jenny was saying that she uh, she loved Meg. Uh, it was so much fun. And Aaron said he's not read Meg, but he's seen the two films and they were fun. Uh, Mark. Uh, oh, hi, Mark. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the Meg book. I thought the film was shockingly bad. <laughs> Uh, Jason Stratham makes that movie along with the uh, with the adorable. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but mm -hmm. uh, Spaminators here. Uh, yeah, the movie of Jaws was way better. Aaron yeah, says, yeah. Hey, to Mark, Jenny says, Mark, how could you? The film was wonderfully cheap. <laughs> Yeah, I thought the film was good. I liked it. It was utter pants. <laughs> utter pants. Uh, hi all. He's saying <laughs> so. He finally says hello. Hello. <laughs> Shame on you. And Aaron says, "Uh, Spaminator. It's been. It's been a long time. Yeah, a long time since seeing you." How is the world domination schemes going? <laughs> uh, sorry, mistype. I was including the adorable kid who uh, hears. Everything. Oh, yeah. I liked the kid in the movie. She was not believable, she, but she was adorable. <laughs> oh, that was that. That's for Meg, not Jaws. Yeah. yeah. If it was in Jaws, Meg, there's a little girl. Yeah. If it was in Jaws, it'd be uh, lunch for for the shark. So. If <laughs> So what's the next one? Uh, did you want to tell a book? I've only got, well, I've got two books left. Did you want to tell a book or? Uh, well, I guess like the first week. Uh, well, I read also, uh, I wish I don't have it hand here. I don't think. I can't reach it. Sean, no, how unprepared can you be? Why did you not have your book? I forgot about it. <laughs> For the CIMAC uh, 2024. Oh, I like uh, the cover. Pilgrimage. Nice and, cover. Yeah, it was it was a good book. Like, well, it's a second read for me. I, I think, I, yeah, I, I think I'd only read it once before. It's it's a fantasy set. Um, it's contemporary when it was written in 1974, but uh, there's no technology. There was no Reformation. No, um, no, no real technology at all. And it's the Catholic Church and the Inquisition reigns uh, supreme. And a young scholar finds a text that talks about the old ones in a, in the wastelands. So he's going to uh, look look for it. Did you and tell me about this? Yeah. Oh, and she, okay. Yes, yes, you did. Right. So and and it's got alternate worlds and um, sort of like that in it too. But uh, no, it was, it was it was a really good one because it's it was it was a lighthearted journey. So it fit in with the adventures uh spring into adventure but then how, uh, the how, how long was uh enchanted pilgrimage how many pages was that uh just over 200. oh okay did your um does that copy have any illustrations in it no oh, okay yeah i don't think there are any that have uh illustrations okay because it wasn't it wasn't serialized so it was just direct to book uh, and then the next one, well, the one the main thing that took up the most week, uh, most of the week was Les Miserables, um, 1,300 plus pages. 
by Victor Hugo, 1862. It's the fifth time I've read it, second time I've read this translation. And I enjoyed it again. It's uh, a sprawling novel, if you want to call it that. There is a, it's not a linear story, but it's, there's a, there is a plot and a story that goes along. But alongside that, there, uh, Hugo has essays, diversions, historical, cultural, <laughs> psychological, you know, sociological. Uh, and he inserts himself a lot into the story. But mm. some people focus on that and they don't like that. But that's not what the purpose of it is, is like, well, he, he does it for a purpose. And uh, to focus on that and say you don't like that part is you're missing the, the big picture. So uh. a, lot of, a lot of people focus on that, on him inserting himself into the into the narrative at mm. times. And, and the extra stuff <laughs> doesn't... Uh, it doesn't work towards the plot so much. It gives background and context. So yeah. So, but I I, I love it, and I'll be reading it uh, many more times. I'm sure. Where are you at now? I'm finished. Oh, you finished it. Oh, okay. I didn't realize you finished yeah. it. Yeah, I I I, I got behind because I was going to finish it in seven days, but I think it took me eight days to do. So I finished it uh, last week, last Monday. I'm shamefully not read the book ever, and I really should. <laughs> well, I think Aaron wants to read it next uh, year, so uh, so I'll probably be reading it again. I'll read the Julia Rose translation. There's six slash eight translations. I say that because there's six main translations, two in 1862, uh, one in um, one in 1900 ish and then uh three more recent ones and the other two are sort of there was a pirated edition from the the first american translation and there was stuff taken out and then they revised that original translation and modernized the language so it's not technically a new translation i uh, see oh but i'm gonna read the previous translation to this uh, when I next read it, I should be able to find the book then. Uh, let's see. Let's get some um, comments here. Go ahead. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Jenny was last saying about the adorable kid. And Mark says, I was hoping she got eaten. So, <laughs> uh, the best I thought thing the kid was cute. <laughs> uh, Mark says the best thing in the movie was uh, the dog. Usually the dog gets eaten by uh, a shark, usually in stories. But Oh, yeah, I forgot about the dog. That dog bit was hilarious. And Aaron says he enjoyed Enchanted Pilgrimage, but he preferred City. Yeah, City is sort of the, the, the best, I think. But there's a lot of parallels to, mm -hmm. to, to City in some ways. Well, come on. And, and Spaminator is replying to Aaron's comment of how, how the world domination is going. Well, Aaron. Uh, we've had a slight setback in the scheming department, had a doctor visit for a checkup, and apparently a steady diet of spam is bad for you. Mm. Spam, 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 and eggs. Um, I thought it was just uh, bad for everyone else. <laughs> Bill's here. Hello, Bill. Hi, Bill. Mark saying hello, Bill. Uh, it's better. So now most of my time is spent working out so I don't explode. <laughs> uh, so, so, are you, so are you saying that you're going from the Spaminator to Mr. Creosult? Mm -hmm. mm. uh, your doctor is clearly just a hater at the Spaminator. Don't listen to him. Um, oh, there's still lots of comments. Look at that. Heck of a lot of comments. <laughs> um, Bill saying Les Miserables is a full month read if I don't get this distracted. Well, <laughs> everybody's got something stupid called a job so you know i don't get that i, I have a life of le leisure so uh and even if my my contracted hours of being able to read because of uh, long COVID, i can do it easily in a week so but that's being having a life of leisure uh was it les miserables that had a confederate translation uh or was that yeah that that's the one that's the sort of pirated version uh, that was done in the in the States. And I think they took the original translation, but because the South obviously 
had slaves, the editors of that thought it would be insensitive to have Hugo's comments against slavery. So it's a perfect example of why you shouldn't, because mm -hmm. there's two sides of the coin here when you do sensitivity, sensitivity uh, you know, editing on stories, mm -hmm. because that can happen as well. Uh, and Aaron says, uh, a spam they always remember with uh, sawbones, they think everything is bad for you, especially if if you're paying them. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're caught up on, uh, so what's your next book? Um, okay, the next book I finished was to continue my whole, you know, turtle rabbit hole, was On the Backs of Tortoises. I read that on Kindle. Uh, Darwin, the Galapagos, and the Fate of an Evolutionary Eden. And I did not like this book. It was, it had a lot of information in it, but it was really boring. And the author repeated herself constantly throughout the whole book. It was really annoying. <laughs> so again, my second turtle book was really, really disappointing. Did she talk about that the turtles were so tasty that well, uh, it was difficult? I mean, the turtles on the Galapagos Islands, that it was difficult to get live specimens back to, to England, apparently. <laughs> well, I guess when they were taking them back to England back in the day, they would um, keep the turtles on their backs and in the boats and tie them down. And and because turtles could go for long periods of times without for long periods of time without food, they just didn't feed them the whole time on the way back to England. And so some of them made it and some of them didn't. But um, but yeah, it was pretty brutal. She paints a pretty um graphic picture of how turtles were treated uh back in the day so was was not pretty but uh yeah i don't i would never recommend this book it was more informational not as much as i wanted but it was so boring and she repeated herself so much i i couldn't enjoy the book so this one was just terribly disappointing and i was despairing of ever getting a good turtle book but my last read for the well, this was these these two books I finished this week. My um my savior for the turtles was Carl Safina, Voyage of the Turtle. This was excellent, five stars all the way. Informational, interesting, good writing, fantastic. Absolutely loved it. So this finally satisfied my turtle craving. <laughs> Who published that one? Who published it? Henry Holt Publishers. So it's not an academic one. It's just a uh, right. So, yeah. yeah, Henry Holt and Company. I don't think any academic publishers publish any of Carl Safina's book. I have a, I have a whole bunch of his books. I really like him as an author. That he's like the head of some ocean institute that I can't remember what it's called, mm -hmm. but he's written he's written a bunch of books. Oh yeah. Few more comments. Bill saying he has no job, just a slow brain, but no brain. Really else to do that thing. But then, yeah. But I love it so much. Like I, like I could, I could take another book uh, that's two hundred pages, and it would take me more than a week to read. Uh, and Aaron said he's looking forward to reading Les Misérables next year, along with Three Musketeers. I got to read that new translation of Three Musketeers, so I might join you for that. And yeah, I'm always up for another read of Gargantua and Pantagruel. I tried that like two years ago and I just, I put it aside and I just never went back to it. I, it didn't particularly hit me great. I love it. I love it. Well, the thing is, it, it's it's the best translation is the, is the Screech, M-A Screech, Ma Screech, M-A Screech. Yeah, I don't think that's the translation I have. Uh, and then Spaminer says, reading Les Mis now. Uh, it's not my typical taste with all the rambling, but for some reason, oh, that jumped and disappeared. Uh, for some reason, I'm loving it. Shouldn't be a surprise. Notre Dame de Paris uh, is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, no, I, I, I love, I love the diversions. Like everybody, like even in the group that uh, the Voxer group, they were saying, oh, you know, uh, because it was mentioned that there's 360 five chapters so you could essentially read a chapter a day for a year and read it 
And then she was saying, oh, is, is, if, if the, uh, if the sewer Paris is one chapter, she'd skip that one. And I love that, <laughs> that section. I just wish it was longer. Um, uh, and Mark saying I need to retry war and peace. Yeah, sometime, but it's just, I, I, I am convinced I'm not, I'm not going to get into it as easily as I do lame as that because rich people sitting around uh you know in, in balls just mm -hmm. saying nothing lots of words and saying nothing just doesn't quite work for me as as well yeah i'm never going to read war and peace i think it sounds awful uh if you want a crash course in turtle anatomy watch the movie cannibal holocaust you know what actually don't do that okay <laughs> What is Cannibal Holocaust about? Is that actually about turtles? Yeah, I don't know. I, I've not heard of it. I haven't either. Boring piece and worn piece. I think it sounds boring too. I'm never going to read it. Well, I, I will because it's one of the few that I haven't read yet. Like, I mean, large 19th century European novels. I still got to do Clarissa, but the problem is, like I've said this before, the first two times I tried it, first time I got shingles the first time. Second time I tried it, I got shingles second time. Third time I, I tried it, I got evicted. <laughs> so what's it's gonna the happen? bad luck book. War, what? I said it's the bad luck book. Yeah, or is, is it going to be World War Three the next time? Well, I better not say that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll make it happen, Sean. <laughs> uh, it's probably a bit more challenging, I think, Tolstoy makes you work a bit more ah, that that doesn't bother me that's the thing um that kind of thing it doesn't bother me uh as as we'll get to uh book in a minute um that sort of you have to work a little bit at but which book are we talking about here which one is mark talking about uh, war and peace oh war and peace okay so yeah i just think it sounds like a boring i just think it sounds like a boring story did you read anything else uh no that was all the books i completed and i mean i started king kong but i'm only through the forward the introduction in chapter one which i've enjoyed so far <laughs> and i'm buddy reading this one with uh, nathan you know rambling re reviewer and uh thomas at um uh wow books art crime and pulp culture i think is what his channel is so but it's well, good so far i haven't read that i love the film but i read two more right uh, and i read she she uh, oh, yeah. uh 1876 77 uh it was published uh adventure novel again that's a terrible cover mm -hmm. with uh oh, i just uh, ursula andrus yeah which so i forgot what's this one about I for, i've forgotten uh it's it's uh about a woman who's in more while well, she's 2000 plus years old in an African kingdom and she reigns supreme. She who must be obeyed, you know, and mm -hmm. I just, you know, I was really hoping that, you know, Hilda Rumpel would show up, but, you know, and Horace, but that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, who's, Hilda, who's Hilda Horace? Uh, Hilda Rumpel. Uh, oh, no, Rumpel. Hilda Rumpel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rumpel, the, you uh, mm -hmm. Horace Rumpel, the uh, uh, the barrister. See, that's a British thing, I guess. <laughs> I guess I don't know what that is. But no, I I, I enjoyed this. Um, it was it was really good. Uh, but yeah, so that was that was another read where we talked about this. If anybody wants to know more, uh, they can look at the uh, Adventure Live video that Mark and I and uh, the, uh, everybody that's doing the adventure. Uh, the adventure uh reading uh that was our group read mm -hmm. the one that i'm saying that was a bit this was for my um patreon book club it's the mandibon gate by muriel spark now she it was published in 1965 is that right yeah 1965 it's set in 1961 so after sort of the partition, I guess, the creation of Israel as a state, but it's still at a point where Jerusalem is split. 
Mm. Uh, and the Mandelbone Gate is the area that you go into Jordan uh, with. And mm. it's about a woman who uh, she's she's a teacher, English teacher in England, but she's fallen in love with an archaeologist who's excavating at the Dead Sea uh, with the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Essene community. So she goes to Israel uh, to, to sort of meet him and she wants to marry him. And the whole question is she's got to get across into into Jordan. Uh, but because she's half Jewish, there's these questions. And it's like the way it's put out is that it's set in with the backdrop of the Eichmann, Adolf Eichmann, uh, Adolf, Adolf, is that his name? I, the Eichmann trial anyway, uh, in 1961, he was on uh, from uh, Nazi Nuremberg. Uh, mm -hmm. But it has nothing to do with that. It's just mentioned at times. And it, it's, it's like talking about that you have to work for this a little bit. It's not, Les Miserables is not a linear plot. This is definitely not linear. Linear. It jumps around, but it's the kind of thing where you're you're thrown into a situation or a scene, and you feel dazed because you don't know what's going on. And then as soon as you you, you sort of orientate yourself, you're onto something else, and you're dazed again. And then you sort of piece this together by jumping around in time. Somebody has, has um, you know amnesia, and you're jumping around. And you go by the end, you sort of you piece everything together. So you have to work at it a little bit. It's not super complex, but you, you put it together. But even the little bit of work that you do doesn't there, there's not as big a reward, as mm -hmm. big a reward as you'd think, because it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really missed everything, but I just mm -hmm. I just thought it was a bit of a wet blanket of a story. Mm -hmm. Uh because they there was no set like there, 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 there's supposed to be a sense that she's in danger uh, because, you know, they find out that there's somebody there. Well, they know her name, that she's Jewish and she shouldn't be there. But you hmm. get a sense of this danger in the writing. Like, it's just, hmm. and then it's like, at the end, it's like, even though she's got to get back to Israel, and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to go uh, to the rest of the holy shrines. Well, what's all this thing about that she was, in danger you know it's, mm -hmm. yeah it just but, but the thing was it missed it missed the boat because it with the uh trial um uh with the trial uh the eichmann trial they could have delved a little more into that and the excavations at, at the at uh, the essene community and the dead sea uh scrolls communities and they could have built up something that was really cool mm -hmm. or she could have but it just didn't. fell short. Yeah. And then the only thing that I like, I enjoyed it, it to a certain extent was because I was in Jordan in 1992. And so a lot of the places they, they mention, I was there so I could fill in the stories, but I don't think she's ever been there because mm -hmm. she doesn't give any description of the places. It's just the names mm -hmm. and not much else, you know? But I did come away with it wanting some Arabic, uh, well, they didn't mention Arabic coffee, but I would like to have had some Arabic coffee, but definitely um, uh, mint tea. That's that's what I would have liked. Uh, um, let's see here. Uh, go back here. Uh, okay. It's, it's probably a bit more. Oh, yeah. That's the Mark. Uh, he read. I think he, yeah, he was saying this is King Kong you read yesterday. Oh, you read King Kong yesterday? Mark, what did you think of it? Uh, and then Aaron is saying Cannibal Holocaust is only for those with a strong stomach. When it was released, the Italian authorities arrested the filmmakers <laughs> to prove uh, the court that it was fake. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's only like 150 pages. Uh, Spaminator says no, it's about cannibals, but oh, but there's a turtle in it. Okay. <laughs> and Mark's Holly's first name was was it horse? Was it really horse? I forgot about that. So I wonder, I wonder if that's where John Mortimer did take the horse rumple. Is it really? I didn't notice that. <laughs> that was that was that was kind of funny. No, it's 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 a character. Uh, Horace Rumpel is a barrister, 
and he's got a wife that's sort of a bit of a a dragon, I guess. She's mm-hmm. always criticizing him uh, for things, and he's he's quite meek with her because he married her because the head of the chambers was her father and stuff, and he mm-hmm. sort of was pulled into being married to her. Uh, but he calls her she who must be obeyed. She it. must be obeyed. Yeah, as as Aisha is is called. So, yeah, no, I I I did I think I uh, read quite well uh, this this past this month so far. So I'm hoping I can keep it up because I do have a stack of other things to read. Um, yeah, you say you're in the midst of um, of King Kong. I'm in the midst of this one here. Which is out of darkness, shining light by Fatina Gappa. I think that's the pronunciation. It's it's the sort of it's not really the final days, but it's the uh, David Livingston who died in 1873 on the African continent, and it's more or less about his his remains, uh, his body, and the uh, native uh, servants he had of getting him back to England. And uh, so I thought that would have been kind of neat. And uh, but it's not proving to be great at the moment. I'm almost <clears throat> pages in, about 80 pages, I think. When did that come? When, when, was, when was that published? Uh, I bought it when it came out. 2019. Oh, OK. So it's not that old. No, no, it's I don't think there has been ever uh, a novel about David Livingston, or at least specifically about this this topic, uh, there, there, I don't think there has been. As I'm not aware of one anyway. So mm-hmm. when I heard about it, I sort of jumped at it. But then when I read the flap, uh, it sort of right. went out of my sails, and I just put it on the shelf and left it. Yeah. So. Well, it sounds like maybe you should have left it. <laughs> yeah, but I, it's it's going to be a fairly quick read, so I'll get that done. Uh, and then there still is for. This is sort of next month, but we're doing it this month. Is another Mariel Spark, but it's at least short. Uh, so I don't know. I I expect maybe more of the same sort of odd um, narrative structure, or at least it's not that odd. It's just like it, you don't you know you have to work for it to understand it, but not too difficult. It's not difficult. Mm-hmm. It's just I- any any kind of difficulty, I expect a reward, <laughs> and I'm not getting a reward. Right. Yeah, that's that's a bummer. I, I've not read any mural, mural sparks. I do have one of her books, but I can't remember which one it is. I think, did I tell you about it? Yeah, I think, it, well, do you have the uh, Prime of Miss Jean Brody? I read that before, and I don't remember it being like this. Mm-hmm. But I read that a long time ago, um, so I don't know. So it might have been like this. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. So. Did she write a book called Memento? Yes. Memento. Okay, that's the one. That's the one I have then. Memento Mori, I think it is. Um, but yeah, I, I might have read that one too. But yeah, I, I I don't remember her her style being like this. But uh, if it is, then I'll read this one, and I don't think I'll be going back to her really at all. Uh, that's about it um, for her. I think that that I'll that I'll say. But uh, uh, are you reading any adventure books? Other well, other than the. Uh, uh, King, Kong. King Kong. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to be reading coming up. <laughs> I haven't made any firm decisions that I can think of. Uh, I do know that at some point I do have some buddy reads coming up, but I can't remember when they are. But they're not this coming week. <laughs> I know that. So I don't know what I'll pick up next. Well, we've we've decided to extend the Spring into Adventure for May, and then we'll be doing the for. Uh, uh, I always get this wrong. World of the Red Sun or Worlds of the Red? Uh, oh, uh, Book of the New Sun. Book of the New Sun. Yeah, yeah. Books of the New Sun or whatever. Yeah. Book yeah. of the New Sun. Yeah. Uh, coming up, I'm going to be reading for Sagalong is the Volsung uh, saga. Is that what you're reading next week? Yeah. Yeah. After the 20th, I guess. Yeah. It's very short. Like it is, it's a day's, you know, or an afternoon's reading. Yeah. Basically. Uh, so I won't be, yeah, I'll be reading that next week. But after after this, after this, I'll probably uh, be starting this. This is Mary Kingsley's 
uh, travels oh. in West Africa that was sort of late 1800s. It's about 800 nice. pages. Uh, it's got lots of illustrations in. Nice. And then uh, Freeman um, sent me some books, and I'm bumping this one up to read, uh, and that's uh, The Wide, Wide Sea, The Final Fatal Adventure of Captain James Cook. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I'm well, actually, I'll have to see. I might flip them around. I might wind up doing that one before this one, because, but I'll have to see. I'll have to see what what uh, the interest is because I might I may be Africa out for the moment after finishing this. Yeah. yeah. So but yeah, so that's I, I I'm hoping that I actually have more time to read something else uh, this month, but uh we'll have to see. Uh, well I'll probably finish one of the other books I've started. Like I started Dr. Javago and got halfway through it and uh, and have put it aside. And I also started this other book. Um in Ascension right here um, by Martin McInnes, which is an author I've never read, but I started this one too. So I'll probably pick up one of those two books next week. What is that about? One of them. Do what? What's that about? Oh, this one, I don't actually remember now. I just remember the part that I've read is about this. It seems like it's in a near future setting and there's like an island that's, it's a, not a natural island and people are living on it. So it needs continent continual maintenance uh, to keep it above sea level and to keep it livable. And this girl um, has become some kind of a scientist following in her father's footsteps. And other than that, I cannot remember what it's about. I have forgotten the synopsis. And I don't want to reread the synopsis because I, I'm I'm enjoying not knowing what's going to happen here. So, <laughs> so it's science fiction then, I guess? It's, fiction. it's like a light science fiction book, yeah. So... And Dr. Javago, I have read before, but it was years ago. And I remember that I liked it, but I didn't like um, the character of Uriel. And I just thought, you know, like in the movie, they call him a uh, Yuri, but I don't think he's called Yuri in the book. I can't remember, but I think it's like Yuria or Uriel or something like that. But um, I remember I didn't like that character. And um, I don't know how far I'm in the book, 150 pages, I think. And he hasn't been mentioned that much. So I'm thinking, what didn't I like about him? As I recall, he was like cheating on his wife and he was a jerk and he was like really selfish. <laughs> and that's why I didn't like the character. But um, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's been just it's been a long time and he's hardly been mentioned this far into the book. So. Yeah, I read it a long time ago. I liked the film uh, and I, I've got a copy of it somewhere and I wanted to reread it at some point. But uh well, the, the writing is absolutely beautiful. I love the writing. It's gorgeous, and it's made me cry a couple of times already. So <laughs> I, I'm really enjoying that one. Because I want to, I do want to resurrect doing the book to film thing, and I thought that would be a, a good one to do. Um, I don't yeah. mean that film, but uh, that would be uh, a nice one yeah. to do. But uh, what is everybody else reading? Is there anything uh, exciting? Is anybody else doing the... Uh, spring into adventure other than i know uh mark is uh but i don't know if anybody else is watch this there'll be a whole flood of comments coming up <laughs> but yeah no it's just there's um I, I'm, I'm just surprised that because for months now i've been uh, well since the move even i haven't read that much and even my my reading time is really narrow these days mm -hmm. but getting a lot read especially uh with the i was i was i was planning on two weeks for les miserables but then once i started doing like i was easy easily doing 200 pages a day so i figured oh okay it's fine i'm not gonna i'm not gonna argue yeah <laughs> right, right. I'll, I'll well, just, I, just, my reading hasn't gone as i haven't read as much this year as i did last year by this time last year i had read so many books i ended up with 146 books last year but this year I'm not I'm not getting through nearly as many books. So Yeah, that by this time last year I read quite a bit, but then it just really, really dropped off. If I would have kept that up all last year, yeah, I would have done really well. Uh but I, I can't remember how many um 
I, I forget it was. I think I'd done over a hundred by this time last year, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it just sort of literally just went here to there. Yeah. Well, I, I have never read 146 books in a year in my entire life. That was like really, really unusual. My usual is anywhere between 30 and 60, like depending on what's gone on that year. So that was really unusual for me. Jenny's saying she's bouncing between Meg 2, Stafford, mm -hmm. Stafford Wives, uh, Amber Spyglass. I don't know what that one is. Uh, Dresden Files. Yeah. Yeah, I, I still, like, I've read the first one I liked. You know why, you remember, oh, that just reminded me. You know why I said it sounded familiar when I was reading it? And I don't know if you remember me saying that. I remember you saying that, but I, I don't remember what the reason was. Well, I didn't know the reason until recently. Oh, okay. There was actually a TV series done, and I watched that, but I completely oh, yeah. forgot it. The, the series was terrible. Like, his yeah. drumsticks were like stand-ins for his wands and stuff, but yeah, I, uh, or his well, that, staff. And... That, that's why I'd forgotten about it, but <laughs> that was why things yeah. seemed so familiar with it. Yeah. And then she, uh, well, go back to Jenny here. She's saying she's reading Discworld as well. Uh, but yeah, I haven't read any of the Discworld's uh, novels. <laughs> I haven't read those either. They're not really appealing to me. Uh, and then, yeah, she's uh, it's got a week coming off. Uh, nice. Coming off. Cut off coming up. <laughs> and Randy Ray's here. Hi, Randy. Uh, I like Bob in the show, though. Yeah, she liked. Uh, she saw the series too, Bob and in um, Dresden Files. Mm -hmm. Jenny saying hi, Randy. Uh, Aaron said just finished Doctor No. Um, Fleming really was writing uh, a homage to Fu Manchu books. There's one scene where Bond goes through Doctor No's obstacle course which could have uh, come straight from uh, Sax Romer. Hi, Randy. Um, yeah, well, it's better late than never. <laughs> well, you're forgiven, but only because you're a Book Trek co-host. <laughs> oh, is he? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my main focus right now is gearing up for Book Trek. I'm getting... I, I bought a bookshelf for my Star Trek books, so I've been organizing my Star Trek books and watching episodes of TOS and getting myself all pumped up for book trek. So <laughs> hey, I, I do have to get a uh, the, the revised the Babylon Five, but the problem is there isn't enough books. To yeah, do it very, uh, very often there's like twenty <laughs> books, so you, you get through those pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Jenny says wizards are never uh, never late. <laughs> Uh, are we going to talk about the merits of the various? So, we no, could. That's, no, we absolutely no. could. I uh, would be all for that conversation. End live screen. Accidentally <laughs> end live screen. <laughs> <laughs> we we had that discussion in the book trick uh, channel last night. I'm in favor of the TNG pajama style uniforms. I think most of the others liked the. Um, TOS movie air uniforms with the red jackets, you know? <laughs> well, I, I love, I, like, when I used to watch occasionally uh, uh, Next Generation is they would they would beam down on the planet and they're wearing the one-piece jumpsuit. Yeah, the pajamas. They're on the planet, they're, they're in a two-piece. And I'm going, how the hell did that happen? There's a, there's, a, there's a transporter malfunction here and nobody's saying anything. <laughs> Uh, I have not read any of those yet, but I have some, so they are on my docket. They're, they're not Star Trek related, are they? Yes. <laughs> they're Star Trek related. Wow. <laughs> they are, uh, by the sounds of it, they are some self-absorbed, you know, Shatner eccentric uh, out there kind of star trek books but you know really can you i mean there's lots of out there star trek books so <laughs> i'm definitely going to read them at some point though 
Uh, Jenny says Star Trek is the one with lightsabers, right? Yeah, the oh! one. The, 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 Jenny! Out, the, the one, the, the one, the one that the lightsabers come out of their arse. That's what it is. We cannot be friends, Jenny. <laughs> uh, Randy says he's read The Return last year for Book Trek and laughed and laughed. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Well, at least, at least, like Bruce Boxleitner, for like he's he's written or apparently written some science fiction, but at least he stayed away the Babylon Five universe by doing it. You, know? <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't shat, you don't shit in your own universe. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh. Uh, Captain Kirk, after he's resurrected, tracks down the TNG one by one and uh, kicks it. Like that, that was the thing. Really I remember real? seeing. I, I seen that that scene when he dies, and I cheered when <laughs> Kirk dies. <laughs> it was a character. People love the. I couldn't stand uh, Kirk. It was a horrible character. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you what. The TOS show is. It, at times, it's a little bit difficult to watch, you know, because like last night I watched a couple of episodes and one of them where McCoy um, slaps a woman to to get her in line. And like this was totally OK. And like it's just those are there's there's some real cringe moments in that original show. There's really cringe moments. But, you know, you still it's still a good show. It's still fun. And I still really like it. So it's those, but, those yeah. cringe moments are going to be in every single one. and. <laughs> 30 years yeah. uh battle with war i don't know what that one is uh, but... my favorite has his battle i think he's talking about a shatnerverse novel oh, okay he was because he says he tracks down all of the tng characters and kicks their asses i'm assuming that must have been a battle he had with war did kirk win in this battle with Worf? because i really have a hard time buying that kirk is winning against war how is this co-opted into a star trek uh live oh jenny 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 i get we chris pine is kirk i have no idea who that is so he's okay as kirk but he's not great but you know who's a much worse kirk is whoever this clown is they have playing him in strange new worlds oh so awful <laughs> I, I just I, I always even even as a kid watching Star Trek, I hated Kirk. I did not like him. <laughs> I like Kirk. You know, yeah. except for some of them old fashioned scenes where the uh rape is okay and the slapping women around is okay parts, you know. <laughs> That's the good old days of the twenty <laughs> fourth century. The good old days of the twenty fourth century. <laughs> Or whatever century it is supposed to be set. I'm sorry, I'm laughing at Randy's comment where he says Kirk uses an old form of Klingon martial arts that Worf isn't familiar with. <laughs> I gotta read these books. <laughs> Actor on SNW, what's that? Strange New Worlds. Oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I don't know what they were thinking. Oh, so so bad he's not kirk like at all like at all i can't even i can't even see a comparison i don't like chris pine either but at least i can see at least i can see kirk and chris pine but oh that clown on strange new worlds is terrible i saw something because it came up on uh i, I don't have prime anymore but i still for some reason get things are they making new discovery because it's like I'm getting uh, notifications. I think it's on its final season. I, I think it's well, on its final season. finished. I thought they finished it. I don't know. I hate that show, so I just won't watch it. Any, I can't watch any more of it without throwing up. So, Well, it's got everything bad about uh, the Star Trek, I guess, and science fiction. But the, the, I liked some. Like I did watch it because I had nothing else to do at the time. But I did like some of the concepts, the science fiction concepts that they were doing, and they were that was kind of interesting. But as part of Star Trek, no. Uh, oh, geez, more Star Trek. Yeah, uh, yeah, Chris Pine has some swagger. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, oh, 
What is it? Do you hate the new Star Trek movies, Brandy? No, I loved them. I thought they were great. I thought they were a good time. But I don't consider those Star Trek though. They're like, you know, they're like an they're like an alternate timeline. So I'm completely cool with that. Which one is the, are those? I don't think I've seen those yet. Or the ones with Chris Pine. The the three movies with Chris Pine. I don't think I've seen them. Well, the first one is really good. The second one is a little bit pukey, but it was still fine. And the third one was okay. It was better, you know. You're an expert on swagger now. Yeah, and then Jenny says he's teaching Kirk. The Mark Richardson's here. Hello, Mark. Hi, hi Mark. <clears throat> Mark got uh, some really nice, uh, nice book haul. Uh, if anybody has, if nobody's seen it yet. Oh yeah, I saw that he posted that, but I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Yeah, he's he's got some nice nice books there. Oh, Mark, I got to show you a book that I got at the library sale the other day. Epics of the Sea. It's some true stories about various uh, incidents on ships at sea, uh, including. Um, uh, the Bounty. It's got the sinking of the Lusitania, the Bounty, the Jeanette, uh, the Confederate Raider Alabama, and the submarine Squalus. Aaron comes to the rescue. To save you from the madness of the Trekkies, Sean, who's your favorite professor quartermass from both the TV serials and the films? Quater mass. Oh, oh, quater mass. Okay. Oh, oh, I know who you're talking about. Now that took a minute. Okay. I do. I do like the uh, serial one for the. Uh, I can't see his names is going to go here. Uh, I can't remember his name, but the one with the uh, uh, the spaceship. Uh, I like. I liked him. Um, and then I liked the guy that was in the hammer version of it too. So it's kind of hard. Uh, uh, Mark's asking who's the editor of that book. Oh, um, oh, let's see. It is A. A. Holing. A. a Holy. Holing. Oh, Holing. Okay. The cover a looked familiar. I, I must have seen that book before. Well, I think it looks awesome. So, and it was a dollar. So I picked it up and I removed the dust jacket protector that had the stickers all over it. So, have you ever seen any of the equator mass? I haven't. What was Jenny's comment there? I missed it there. Something about Star Trek. It's tricky, my. Yeah, it was a very actiony, very actiony. I agree. Dollar is good. Yeah, dollar is good. <laughs> well, you only paid uh, what is it, three dollars for that two volume Drake and uh, um, whatever the the naval history one that he's got there, and then he he got some really good archaeology books too. Like he's got the Pritchard uh, one, the you well, the smaller version of it. And what was that, Mark? That was only a couple dollars, too. It's like, yeah, that, that I wouldn't pass up. Did he go to a library sale? Yeah, that was, well, no, that was the, what do they call it? What do they call it, the four colleges or something like that? Uh, Mark will say, I'm sure. <laughs> it, was, it was $3. Nice. But yeah, I I don't go to sales anymore. There hasn't been any. I went to a few here in the UK, but they never were very good. Mm. Yeah, Andre uh, Merrill and uh, Andrew Kerr. Yeah, or Kerr, uh, one of two favorite Quatermass actors as well. Nigel Neal uh, thought Kerr was the best of all of them. Yeah, five colleges <laughs> book sale. Yeah, I just I went to some sales and they were they're they're really really poor. Like I went to one in. Um, Oxford when I first came here and it was like you know it was it was just about to open up and there was nobody there and I thought oh this is okay 
So I go mm -hmm. in and it was like, it just looked like it was picked through, like, you know, for, for months. And then this was oh, the wow. make of a sale. It was just mm -hmm. bad. Um, so I didn't, I didn't get anything. I miss, I miss the sales that I used to go to in the States and in Canada mm -hmm. at uh, University of Toronto. And there were some local ones that were really good. Problem is that you got to you got to get there about ten or twelve hours before it opens if you want any chance of getting us to get mm -hmm. that first ten in line or something like that. Uh, yeah. In uh, in our town here, we have something called Friends of the Library, and if you're a Friends of the Library member, like you pay like a yearly due, it's really really low, you know. Then you can go in the day before the sale officially starts and pick out whatever books you want to. Oh, well, yeah. I've never I've never done it, but yeah, I've never paid I've never paid for the membership or anything, but <laughs> but you there, can. <laughs> there, there was uh, I was down in the states. Uh, it was in Connecticut, I think, and mm -hmm. there was a university uh, book sale. Uh, didn't know it was actually happening because it wasn't on the list of things. Uh, but the real sale for everybody else was like the next day, and this was the evening. It was Saturday morning, but this was. Friday afternoon or late afternoon doing this, but yeah, you had to be an alumni of the university. So go up. Yeah, I I forgot all of my papers and stuff. They let us in. They let us in. <laughs> cleaned up there. Cleaned up there. Uh, <laughs> it's fabulous. Yeah, it's always worth to go back on the last day of stuff because. People have, well, at least when I went, you you know, people pull stuff and then they decide they don't want it. So it gets misplaced. And then by the time the end of the thing, the people there are putting the books back into the into the uh, proper areas again. And then you can still find some half decent stuff. Um, Mark said, yeah, his library has friends uh, sale in September. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, Randy. Bye, Randy. Bye. Yeah, I really miss I miss book sales. Because the other thing that was fun, too, is that because every, every spring and fall, you get these sales that you travel around to and you see the same people, you know, mm -hmm. all the time. So it's like you, you, you start up conversations that finished last time, you know, a year, mm -hmm. a year before. Uh, well, in the UK, wouldn't that be wouldn't you be considered weird if you talked to somebody you didn't know? <laughs> Probably, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I don't think they they have a sales thing here like they do uh, anywhere else. Yeah. I've never seen it. Did Canada uh, have book library sales like the US does? Yeah, yeah. Last well, thing, yeah, University of Toronto had. Uh, had really good sales in the in the fall and autumn, and then in the spring there was one that was near by to me in Alora that was that was good. It was always good. Uh, I think that one of the last years that I went to, somebody had dumped uh, like chess books, like you know had a huge collection of thousands of chess books. Oh wow! And they were all like fifty cents or a dollar each, and, wow. and so I just well I was selling books at that time. So I just, I bought probably a thousand of them or more. <laughs> I can't imagine reading about chess as a subject. That seems like it would be really uninteresting. <laughs> but people do and, and collect it. And at 50 cents and a dollar a piece, it was easy yeah. to, make, to make some money off it. You know, it, you know, yeah. there were some that I knew, but it is, it's a good solid book. But uh, like Mark was saying that, that there's people there now, they got their phones and they got you know isbn readers but you know a book oh it doesn't have an isbn they don't know what to do with it mm -hmm. so they they can't do anything yeah i don't think i ever went to that one and i don't or maybe i have because i know i've been to a, a few sales in vermont area but I, I don't remember it being called five colleges. So, but I may very well have been. I may, I may so very well have been there. What is this five colleges sale? Is this a particular sale that happens at one place somewhere in the in the New England area, or or what is that? What is this five colleges sale? 
I think it's exactly what it is. Five colleges get together. And... I mean, I figured that, but I mean, is this, is this like a traveling book sale or is it like, you know, like an event that some kind of a nationwide event that happens everywhere, or is it just a local sale there in the area that Mark lives? That's what, that's what I'm curious about. It's in Lebanon, uh, New Hampshire. Ah, okay. I, I'm sure I've been, like, I must have been to it because I've been to uh, book sales mm -hmm. all up uh, uh, New England, uh, you know, in Massachusetts, uh, Vermont. I remember going to bookstores in Vermont. It's once a year, local, uh, massive. So, yeah, so he says local. Nice. I would like to go to a massive book sale like that. That's but from colleges. That would be, that would be excellent. <laughs> 60th year. 60th year. Wow, that's a long time. It's impressive. Yeah, that's that's like some of the ones. Like I think the University of Toronto is probably getting up to that too. Some of them, and other ones. I lived I lived in New Hampshire for a year, but you know I was five years old, so you know I wasn't going to any book sales <laughs> at that time. I remember uh, going to uh, Oklahoma for a book sale, um, and we drove from Canada to Oklahoma, and we went through the corner of Kansas because to get there you dip, mm -hmm. dip in Kansas. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was it was a book sale that that touted that it said over a half a million books. So you mm -hmm. go, that's got to be great. Yeah, there's got to be something there. Mm -hmm. I came out with a tiny little box. Really? Yeah, because yeah, they have a half a million books, but it's they were very expensive, and they kept books year in year out. So X libraries, like I would say, eighty percent of everything I saw was X library copies of stuff that people have been looking over it for decades, and nobody wants it, and they just kept mm -hmm. bringing them back out. And wherever they kept them, it was in a place that that was actually damp as well, you know. Um, damp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, oh no, 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 sorry, that wasn't that one. That was one in um, in uh, Connecticut. There was a sale in Connecticut that we had to get there a day and a half before. Like we had to get there about almost forty hours before in order to get get in. Um, wow. And that place, yeah. That was that was everything. You you, just, you could feel the dampness in it. Mm, that doesn't sound good at all. Well, that's that's the that's the good. Well, you can have ex libraries, but the thing is, like you know, if you got fifty copies of Dan Brown's book that's ex library, like you know, well, that wasn't the case with the Oklahoma one, but it was stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That you know, they had dozens of copies of things like Daniel Steele's, uh, you know, books in X library and it's like people you know if they haven't bought it 10 years ago they're still they're not going to buy it now so I, I had a small little box of some archaeological reports and that's that's all I got that's all I got well I actually don't mind X library books and I'll tell you what I've taken to doing is just taking those freaking um yeah uh, protectors off because like the covers are so much better without pressure like this was an ex library book right here you know what I mean? so and I just took the ugly messed up dust jacket protector with all the stickers and everything off of it and I've got like a perfectly good book now so oh, it, it works like for yeah nonfiction stuff like that you can't find I've got I've got ex library books uh, too but the thing is if you wanted just a book like I say if you want to you know a, a normal fiction book where like you know x library or non-x library and, and you can get the non-x library is easy it's not mm -hmm. like a rare book like not a rare but less common book that's that's a reference it's just mm -hmm. it's just too many too many and the other the other place that was really bad was uh philadelphia and it was in a oh, I, I keep forgetting the name what do they call these but you know where where you take horses indoors that you would you would um, you know not race them but uh, exercise. Them? Them. Well, no, just uh, exercise them. Oh. And and this was this was in like February, so it was bloody cold. Mm. The inside was dirt floor, and so it was wet. 
and they had the the books in boxes sitting on the dirt. Oh so gosh! Just sucked up all the moisture. Oh, that's not good. So so you, you pick up a book that was sitting mm -hmm. like this, and you know how it gets it sort of fans out with the moisture on the bottom edge. Oh my! Yeah, that's pretty bad. Well, so you know, since we've got Mark Richardson here, I have to ask you, Mark, um, how many of your pirate books did you actually end up getting through? <laughs> you never get X Library. Oh, he knows what they do to books. He knows <laughs> very much what they do to books. <laughs> no. Yeah, I didn't get through any of the pirate books last year. I got through I got six or seven. seven. Yeah, I didn't get I didn't get any of them. Uh, I wanted to get because there's and I think they're still available. There's there's some science fiction ones like space pirates and stuff like that, and I thought that would be kind of cool. Yeah. If I ever get around doing any more videos, I plan to um, do an updated pirate project list, TBR list. Seven, halfway through eight. Nice. Nice. I think that's what I got through seven or eight of mine. Yeah, because I had two. I I had two. Like I still want to read it. I don't know where it is, but it's the uh, uh, the Daniel. I think you have it, uh, Brandy, and Mark has it. It's the Daniel Defoe one. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I have another one, a, a smaller one that was that that is on pirates too. Uh, but yeah, I didn't have too many of them, and I just yeah, I just never got around to doing them for some reason. But next year, uh, if we go, if, if uh, Mark at Book Time with Alice is still here, when we do, we do Adventure Thon 2024. Yeah, you can do the Pirates will fit right in. <laughs> yeah. And I'll definitely be doing more uh, of my exploration books that I haven't read yet so far. Mm -hmm. And some other archaeology uh, biographies. I've got a really good one of uh, of uh, Petrie, hmm. Sir William Matthew Flinders Petrie, uh, that I want to that I want to read. I'll tell you what I would like to revisit is that Stephen Decatur, I think, was his name. I, I think his first name was Stephen. But I read like a really short hundred page book about about this guy, and it was so interesting. I just absolutely loved it. But I just I wished it had been more comprehensive. So I do plan on looking for like a better book about that. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be about Stephen Decatur, but just about that entire situation that we had with the with the Barbary pirates and then blackmailing our government stuff. That was just so interesting to me. And I don't usually like that political stuff, but I, I would like to find a, a better book about that, like a more comprehensive book about that. I remember having a great big book. Well, that was weird. I'm hearing what? myself. I'm hearing myself, but sounding muffled back. Okay, now it's gone. Okay. <laughs> I had a great big book on the Barbary Pirates one time, and I never read it. Uh, I never got around to reading it, but uh, hmm. uh, it was an older one too. But it looked, it was really good. It was, or it looked good anyway. I should say. <laughs> the Barbary Pirate books are legion. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's there's there's so much stuff that we could put in. Yeah, the the uh, um, uh, yeah pirate stuff because I think Mark read something that was pretty good because you could you could do the um, um, which I which I would like to do if I if I get something else I don't have a book though it's the uh, uh, the Sea Peoples. You know, uh, that would be that would be uh, something that would be kind of cool. Uh, well, I've been to... I've been rewatching Sequest lately. Does that count? <laughs> that's not pirates. That's not sea peoples. That's not. <laughs> I could sneak it in under the pirate nautical, you know, <laughs> thing. Nautical, yeah, but uh, that's the, but that's the thing for, for the adventure thing. Any of that well, they, they do deal with pirates every now and then in Sequest. So. Mark, that dealt with pirates. Mark, <laughs> Mark dealt with pirates as well. Mm -hmm. Real pirates. 
Oh, I think I remember him talking about that when he was in the Coast Guard, right? Yeah. Sequest does rock. I really like it. I watched it when I was real young. Um, and then I haven't watched it since I was watching it on TV and I never finished it. Like I didn't watch all season three. And so um, I've been, I've been rewatching it and I'm going to try to get through all of it this time. Yeah. I, 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 like I think I mentioned to you, I watched, I think probably the first season all the way through and then sporadically. And then when they changed the captains, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really, uh, was it Michael Ironside was the final captain? I can't remember now. I did not know they changed captains. <laughs> they did. Did not know that. What season? Which season did that happen? I guess it's the last season. Uh, like the uh -oh. whole. I think most of the crew disappeared. Uh, like everybody disappeared because it's really? in the future. Like it's it's then in the future. I think or something like that. Even yeah, I remember there was some time travel involved at some point, which I didn't care for. But I don't. I only vaguely remember that. <sighs> Stargate Atlantis. Yeah. I never, I never watched any of the Stargate shows. Yeah, I, I like they're they're fun watching. Like I, uh, the Star uh, Stargate Atlantis was free on on um, on Prime one year. I don't know if it still is, but I watched that all the way through, and it was fun. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Like I don't need to watch it again, but I and I used to watch periodically uh, <laughs> the original series. Uh, <clears throat> I never, I never got around to watching. Um, Stargate Universe, I think, and that that's the one that didn't really go very far. Uh, what's it? There's a book called Jefferson's uh, First War by Joseph Whelan about the American uh, fighting uh, Barbary pirates. Let me write that down. That's good, from what oh, I remember. I have a notebook right here. <laughs> okay. Uh, the the answer to your question, I haven't got to it yet, Jenny. I'm not. Uh, popping it up because Brandy's writing, but the answer is yes. Yes, Darwin. Yeah, I, oh, I've been through and watched uh, the, the, all the Stargate uh, stuff. Uh, I finally actually got around to watching the original movie, which I never did. I, I just watched it, I think. It was either earlier this year or, or last year. Maybe it was earlier this year. Are you talking about the Stargate movie? Yeah. Oh, I loved that movie. That movie was so good. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't I didn't care for Kurt Russell though as the, the character. It didn't he didn't work for me. Yes, the Sequest had a dolphin. Well, the dolphin didn't talk, but they had a, a program that would interpret the dolphin's noises into English. <laughs> they they've taken that from um, what's it, the the uplift stuff uh, where there's a captain of a spaceship that's a dolphin uh stargate is great yeah richard dean anderson like it was like the only thing that i i just every time i see him i see macgyver and it's like <laughs> hating macgyver <laughs> but the guy had a good run he had a good run yeah dave uh brin yeah that's it that's it mark uh uh Brin. Uh, oh, we're uh, talking about the uplift, uplift trilogy or the uplift books. I guess there's six of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, Richard Dean. It's it just, but he had a good run on on TV because he went, I think, right from MacGyver right into Stargate. I think. I really liked MacGyver. That old '80s. I loved it. <laughs> I loved that show. Of course, I was in elementary school. I don't know if I'd watch it now and and still like it, but I loved it when I was a kid. <laughs> like you could you could throw MacGyver into an outhouse, into the into the the, the pit of the outhouse, and he'd build a nuclear bomb from the mines in there. That's what I like about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I still to this day this day use MacGyver as a reference for people who can like make st something out of practically nothing. <laughs> I always call it. Did you just MacGyver that or whatever? <laughs> I loved that show. I thought it was great. Uh, have you been drinking? Yeah, yes. Have you been drinking tonight, Mark? <laughs> Xena Warrior Princess. I loved Xena Warrior Princess. My son and I watched Xena Warrior Princess uh, when he was little, and um, he, my last birthday, he bought me all of Xena Warrior Princess on DVD because he wants us to watch it all. Uh, he wants us to watch it from beginning to end together. Now that he's an adult, 
he hasn't seen it since he was a kid. I love Xena. <laughs> and then you're going to watch Hercules after that, right? No, I, I wasn't into Hercules. Uh, Aaron is saying there was a documentary about the war against the pirates called The Battle of Tripoli on YouTube. Oh, okay. Interesting. Despite being the History Channel, yeah. I don't know what the History Channel's doing, but... Uh... Amanda Tapping had a great outtake yelling at, uh, I guess, Richard Dean Anderson to fix something as he used to be with Clive <laughs> That's she, hilarious. She the show for a while, and she did a series called uh, Sanctuary, which was kind of neat, but it was, it, it just had, it went stupid at times, but it was kind of neat. It's like she's a hundred and some years old. There's the Invisible Man, sort of. Uh, there's Dr. Watson, which is Sherlock Holmes. There's a vampire. Uh, you know, it, it's, 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 and there's creatures. And it's, it's actually good in some respects, but it, they all fault with stupid episodes. It's like I'm actually mm -hmm. watching now, uh, off and on, like I've been doing this for quite a while because it's free on the freebie is the lost world tv series from 2000 that is like there's some episodes that are going oh, okay that's okay and then they get really it goes to bad to stupid <laughs> you know? i okay now if it's the same show i loved that show that's with the real pretty blonde yeah in the, like mowing cloth outfit right yeah okay yeah no i loved that show except for it ended on a cliffhanger hanger and i was furious that I never did get to find out what happened at the end. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, no, it's just it, it goes from like I, I said, you know, okay, to bad to stupid. You know? I, I feel like that's what made this show so good was how ridiculous it was. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. I forgot. It's Jack the Ripper uh, is in that too with uh, Amanda Tapping. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, it, it's it, it's basically it's based on Arthur Conan Doyle's Lost World, uh, and it's that plateau they go to. Uh, but it's got everything. There's aliens, you know. There's dinosaurs. Yeah, dinosaurs. Lava yeah, men. Yeah. <laughs> Every yeah, uh, I love that show. It's it's not it's not the loincloths like the. Uh, Johnny Weismuller uh, Tarzan movies from the 30s, where uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Margaret Livingston? No, is it Margaret Livingston? The actress that's playing Jane, she's wearing a loincloth, but all it is is a piece of cloth that's for her back and her front that's tied all along her hips. She's mm -hmm. not wearing anything else underneath it. And you see everything in scenes. And this is 1930s. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, um, the blonde outfit isn't that bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dinosaurs aligned loincloths. I would pay to see that. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it's just, it's, like I say, it, it, it's got some okay things in it. I never, I never watched it, so I figured it's free. And I might as well take advantage of it, but I've been watching it for months. Like occasionally, I'll watch an episode because I can't, I can't watch more than one episode in several days because I just go, "Oh, this is so bad." <laughs> well, I think it's so bad. It's good. I love that show. It was. It was. I did. I did. I did get through Andromeda, and that was the same. It was like there's some good things in it, and then they just get stupid. You know. <laughs> Now, see, I haven't seen Andromeda. I always wanted to, but because I was never like super big on watching TV, you know, I would I would find myself wanting to watch a show, but just never ever doing it, never watching it. And that was one of those shows that I missed out on, but wanted to watch. And then they had it for free on like the Roku channel for a while. And I watched the first episode and I liked it, but then I never went back to finish it. And now it's not free on Roku anymore. So who knows when I'll ever watch it. Yeah, or well, if I'll ever watch it. It was on freebie, but the thing that, that was problematic there too was that they mixed up the order of episodes because you're mm -hmm. going through and you don't you don't realize that you've missed an episode, but then all of a sudden you get to an episode and you go, wait a minute, 
that doesn't fit there. And then you realize that it's out of order. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw uh, the original Star Trek on um, a streaming service, which I think was Netflix, because I think it was Netflix was the only one around at the time. Um, uh, and they had that they had those out of order as well. They had the Star Trek original episodes out of order in that first season. Uh, Mark said, yeah, uh, Buck Rogers in the 25th century with mm -hmm. Numa Deering. <laughs> but it had the stupid robot. <laughs> or whatever. Oh, that was that. That was the bad. Part. Beedie, beedie or whatever. <laughs> that was that was bad. It was like I watch it. Like, like why didn't why didn't somebody just blow the bloody robot up? You know. <laughs> it's like they all they they all do stuff like that for some reason. Like there's good aspects of it. It's like I remember the original um, uh, Battlestar Galactica too. They they get the robot dog for the kid. And I'm going, oh, God, that was just so bad. Like, there's <laughs> things that they do that just, you know, there's good concepts and some things, and then just very, very bad. This is flashbacks to Earth 2, Last Train, Eureka, Dark Angel, Dollhouse. All have ridiculous <laughs> ideas, but love. I, Earth 2. I didn't watch any of those. <laughs> Earth too. I think I know what this one is. Yeah, it's it's, it's there. They are on another planet, and there's different factions that have humans that have crashed. I think last train. I don't know what that is. Eureka. I kind of liked. Dark Angel. Is that that's not Angel, is it? I don't know what that one is. No, but, that had uh, Jessica Alba in it. I never watched it, but I remember seeing it advertised. Oh, I, I, don't, I think there was a superhero type character of some kind. I'm not really sure. Oh, there was something that I started watching that I kind of liked. It was they were genetically uh, enhanced children that had a barcode on their neck, and she she's a she by day she's she's a a, a cyclist courier. She 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 delivers packages, and it's it's a future where uh, technology has been wiped out by some kind of thing. But then I watched it for a little while, and I kind of liked it. And then all of a sudden, I went back to it in a different season later on, and it just seemed like they rewrote it, and it was different. Oh, that is that is the one I'm thinking of. But yeah, I, I kind of liked the first episodes I watched, but then when I went back to it a year later, it just seemed like everything was different. Like, they, they rewrote the show. They, they, they rebooted it or something almost. Yeah, Logan's Run... Logan's Run. The, yeah, the series was okay, but I liked the film. Um, I, Jenny liked the movie. I loved the movie. I want to read the book. That's why you never you never go on carousels in in things <laughs> in, uh, in um, you know parks and fairs and stuff. You just stay away from carousels. <laughs> if you're over thirty, you know you just definitely stay away. <laughs> No, that's a, that's a good one. I got the book and I got it. I got the film. That's another one that I gotta uh, read, uh, read or reread. Yeah, that movie was excellent. I I never did read the book, but I I want to. Oh, I I loved I loved uh, what's his name in there? Um, like I'm getting to the age now that I could probably do him. Uh, what's his name? The the old guy they find in Washington D.C. with all the cats. And he starts quoting. Uh, well, I don't uh, know who that was. Uh, You're talking about the actor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the character. Oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't remember who the actor was. Yeah, uh, well, I can't think of his name. <sighs> the Marks will know because Mark actually, he was actually the provost or something of his college or something like that, or the head of his <laughs> college uh, for a while. Um, I can't think of his name. Peter Ustinov. That's it. Peter Ustinov. Mm. Yeah. Those I couldn't I couldn't get along <laughs> with because Knight Rider especially because I can't stand Hasselhoff. I just can't stand him. Like it just <laughs> no. It just no. <laughs> I liked Knight Rider, but I didn't like Airwolf. I tried why i never I, I don't remember uh airwolf that that much to be honest i know i didn't watch it but i don't remember it it was real popular i remember it being real popular oh the the actor the voice actor that was that was the car really good 
because he's a really good actor and his son's amazing actor too. Now, now I've got to make a Babylon five uh, because he was in Babylon five. And then his son was in Babylon five as well as a techno mage. And then there was the spinoff series crusade that had his son in. Yeah. So I got to <laughs> bring Babylon five back. Fit the Babylon five in there somewhere. <laughs> All roads lead to Babylon 5. Oh, God. Well, even Major Barrett uh, is is on Babylon 5. Is she? Does she appear in an episode? Yeah, she, she she's in a couple episodes, but she's also the voice of the computer. On Babylon 5? Yeah. Really? Yeah, she's the voice of the computer. I, I'm sure she is, yeah. But on she, Babylon 5? Yes. I'm sure she is. I, I see the the if the problem is with this long COVID. I can't. When somebody questions something I say, I can't be 100 percent sure because I know my brain is not, doesn't work correctly. I know she's the voice of the computer on Star Trek Next Generation, but I. Uh, computer. Uh, voice. Uh, Bab. Babylon. I didn't. I don't remember the computer having a voice in Babylon Five. Not that I watched it all, mind you. I yeah, couldn't. Well, when, they, when they rebooted it, it was Harlan Ellison uh, as Sparky. No, it wasn't. It was the script supervisor who was the voice. But she's on there. She's on mm -hmm. there. She's she's the queen or something. Uh, and uh, or not. Well, she she is a. Uh, she could see the future. She's she's one of the you call space pirates. I see. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't even remember the name of that race because I don't call them space pirates. I call them space vampires. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. Space yeah. Dracula. <laughs> they did have they did have lightsabers, but on ships that went out with with a laser that would cut another ship in half. It would just go zing like a uh, hot knife through butter. So yes, it didn't have lightsabers, but cool lightsabers. <laughs> and I won't even acknowledge that one. <laughs> Love it, Mark. <laughs> Yeah, they're supposed to. They're still talking about the possibility of a reboot. People will say, uh, you know, they'll they'll put things out and say, no, it's not going to happen. And then JMS uh, Straczynski will come back and say, well, it's still not dead, <laughs> not dead yet. Mm -hmm. So they've done everything else. So I don't know why they don't they don't do that. They've rebooted every bloody thing, like they've rebooted MacGyver apparently. <clears throat> they rebooted like. Uh, uh, Magnum PI and they even and clock and leap. <clears throat> yeah, you told me that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's not good. <laughs> well, I love, I love the uh, uh, like I saw the tra I guess not trailer, but the introduction, you know, that they show bits from other episodes, uh, in, in the series of mm -hmm. Magnum PI, and he's mm -hmm. he's in his um, his uh. Uh, Ferrari, red Ferrari, and he's being chased by a truck, and the truck pushes the red Ferrari over the cliff, and the truck follows in behind, but what he does is, as he goes over the cliff, he jumps up uh, from his seat, runs over the top of the back of the Ferrari, jumps onto the truck, and then jumps and runs off the back of the truck and then hits the road. <laughs> While that's going down, I go, oh, come on! It's like he's not James Bond, okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, on Dooney's, oh no, not not the Dune, not the that Dune, no. I love that old Dune movie. I thought it was great. The the only one that's good, like so far, is the Sci Fi Channel, uh, is version. That's that's the best one. Oh, the miniseries. What do you mean nobody like? I love Babylon Five. That's it's the best. The best science fiction show that's ever been on TV. <laughs> well, I've I tried it. twice to get through Babylon 5, and I still can't get through it. 
It's like Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> you can't get no respect. No. Uh, yeah, you, I forgot about Eureka. That was an interesting show. Uh, there, there's other ones that I've been watching. Uh, let me see. The, uh, I love old Dune movies and SF Channel. Movies. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I, I just, the only thing that kept me from walking out of, uh, of uh, the Dune film when it came out in in the eighties uh, was Jessica. You didn't uh, like Jessica? No, she's the only thing that oh. stopped oh. me from walking out. Uh, oh, I but, see. Um, oh, I can't think of her name now. It's just my brain's mush. <laughs> but but the uh, she is just she fit for Jessica because yes, she, she did. Yeah, she's sexy. They screwed up the Jessica in these new ones. I'm like, I don't know who that is, but that ain't Jessica. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a terrible choice for Jessica in these new movies. Well, you see, that's the thing. Babylon 5 is, again, like on the surface, a space opera, but there's a lot of depth to it. So it's it's a little more than that. It's like, it's like Hyperion Cantos. You could just read it as a space opera, but there's, you could peel away the layers the, the, like an onion. And get it well, well I think you must have to get through two seasons because I got a season and a half in and still had not come across this depth of which you speak. So, <laughs> going back to Jessica, yeah, I didn't think that it, she worked in the, the new one, and it's the same thing. They did a they did a um a movie that was supposed to have been the life of uh, Louise Brooks. And Louise Brooks sort of just sparkles mm -hmm. in a photo and on uh, and um, and 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 on film. And they got an actress that kind of looks like her, but doesn't sparkle. Mm -hmm. And people were like, you know, the character, like the other characters in there are, you know, treating her like H. Ryder Haggers, she, you know, that that they fall in love with her as soon as they see her face and stuff like this. And the actress didn't have that oomph, that 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 appeal to her. And it was like, okay, get somebody. It, it doesn't matter if they look like that person, but they have to have this aura about them. That's mm -hmm. the biggest thing. And they didn't do that. Yeah, just a bit, just a bit. Uh, I'll be rereading that again uh, as soon as anybody wants to do another, uh, wants to read it, that's for sure. You couldn't get through that either. You can't get through quality science fiction. I I will get through Hyperion. My problem is, is I don't like these people st telling their life stories in my science fiction. <laughs> I don't know. I restrict that to Canterbury Tales. <laughs> But I want to read, I want to get through that first one so I can get to the next one because I keep being told the next one is like the story or whatever. So Rich, Rich. Um, on Hyperion. Oh, yeah. We see like a lot of, I like it all. Like I like them all because there is like, it's, it's actually one novel. See, that's the thing. It's split up into two novels, Hyperion and the Fall of Hyperion, but it's actually one novel. So it's the first part of the novel that's setting everything up. And then you start learning stuff in the in the second one, uh, but it but it's different. And then and then it's more story based. It goes, it, it gives some background too, but more more detail with the characters, um, mm -hmm. or while the characters re, uh, revised or not revised, uh, brought back, um, mm -hmm. but differently. But anyway, uh, and then and then the next two novels, the next one is story based, and then the final one is sort of telling the story after the fact, like the first one. Mm. It's like being, a, being told as a story. So he flipped it around. <laughs> See, I think my problem is I don't like that style of story mixed with my science fiction. Cause I wasn't a fan of city either. You know what I mean? And city is a series of tales, you know, as I say, you just don't like quality, quality writing. 
people. Well, I could go on and on about Hal Clement and Robert L. Forward. <laughs> yeah, the uh, uh, definitely. Um, uh, what's his name? Chekhov mm -hmm. really, really sh uh, shined uh, with with Babylon Five. Mm -hmm. he, one, of the, one of the best evil characters that were on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, Garibaldi, yeah. They're all dead now. Mm -hmm. Well, there's like almost half of them are, are dead. Like Garibaldi's dead. Uh, all, see, all that was part of my problem with Babylon 5. Why I was having such trouble with this because I didn't like any of the characters. I didn't like the side lady. I didn't like the second in command, the Russian girl. I didn't like Sheridan. I didn't like Gibraldi. I didn't like anybody in the show. Yeah, Sher oh, I like, it's a good character. I like Jakar. And I like this. I like Space Dracula guy, Lando. I think his name is Lando. Lando. And I like the aides. I like both of their aides. And that's it. Oh, and I liked um, I, what's the boneheaded lady's name? I forgot. Delenn. Delenn. I liked Delenn until she got hair, and then uh, then I didn't like her after that. <laughs> but yeah, well, the the uh, Delenn's aide. Um, uh, is is Will Robinson? Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, Will Robinson. Hilarious. So he, he was in two massively big science fiction shows. Once as a little boy, and, <laughs> and as uh, near. Nice. <laughs> they, they never actually completed his arc on mm -hmm. on Babylon Five. Like what, what he does, mm -hmm. you know what he does, but how does he get there? That's the thing. Um, Alex Day, hello. I only know Garibaldi as a biscuit. Garibaldi. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't remember her name. The lab. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, like, you know, I, I just don't forget, like you say, you want to read this, but you might as well just forget it because I love it. So you're not going to like it. What is that that you just put up? The, oh, Les Miserables. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I do want to read that. But I love it. So you're not going to like it. <laughs> well, I think we have, we, well, you know, actually we do have a lot of opposing tastes. I was to say, I think really our opposing tastes are mostly in science fiction. But no, I think there's a lot of stuff actually that we <laughs> we have opposing tastes on. But we do both like Dracula, so that's this is true. This is true. <laughs> that's one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, um, what was the one I had you read? Oh, Anna Dressed in Blood. You liked Anna Dressed in Blood? Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, it was. It, it, it was enjoyable, and I did get the second one, which I'll read at some point. It was. It was a fun read, but. It's not something that I would reread, I don't think. Uh, but I would reread that. It was one of the, you know, maybe three or so YA books that I actually really liked. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think there's any. Oh, actually, it, the only YA book that I did like was The Book Thief. Oh, you know what? That just bored the crap out of me. I, I do intend to go back and try it again sometime. But I got about. 75 pages into that one, I was about ready to fall asleep. <laughs> well, I'll just make a list of my favorite books and you can just avoid them. There you go. That would be good. <laughs> Before I pick up another real popular book or well known book, I'll say, Well, did Sean like this? Because if he did, I probably shouldn't read it. <laughs> Because I was telling you about the Strangers and Brothers, which I love, and you said it sounds boring. It sounds boring. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and that, what's the other one that you were reading? Forsyth or something like that? Oh no, I, I, uh, Mark was reading the Forsyth saga. I, I like oh. it. I, I got to go back to reread that. Okay. <laughs> Artemis the Fowl books. 
are entertaining YA. I'm not familiar with those. The are they science familiar. fiction or fantasy? Or it sounds like fantasy. The name's familiar, but I don't know. Artemis Fowl. I don't know. I I know the name, but uh... is it an intelligent uh, duck that shoots arrows? I'm just asking. Is there? I do a no, <laughs> I never did read Percy Jackson. I think I might have been an adult when that one came out. When did when did the Percy Jackson books get published? Yeah, I I, I know that they were around, <laughs> but I never read them. It's, it's the same as the Goosebump ones. They're they're fun to read, but again, yeah, I don't reread. Like you know, and I get well. Okay, you bought and you haven't read yet. Uh, Paddington Bear, so you might as well forget it. Now that one I do think I will like. I do think I'll like Paddington. Uh, their action fantasy. Uh, the first book had a tagline of Die Hard. With, with fairies? <laughs> that sounds entertaining. And uh, Jenny saying she read them as an adult. And still liked them. Um, like, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, I, like I, I don't really. Well, when I say young adult ones, sorry. Uh, well, yeah, I guess you, if you call them a young adult, then there's a good chance I might not like it. But if you call them juvenile, like the way they used to be, juvenile mm -hmm. stories, then I do like. I do like a lot of that. Bye, bye, Mark. Bye, Mark. Um, yeah, so there, there's a lot of what. Yeah, what was juvenile that I that I that I, I don't think they were called juvenile when I was younger, at least not in my area. Uh, I only remember there being like a teen section in the library. Like it, there was a big sign that said teen, and then there was a bunch of books under the teen arc, you know. Well, and that's as close as I remember it ever coming. Juvenile is sort of like Tarzan is juvenile. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, cartoon books, maybe. Yeah, to a certain extent, possibly. Yeah, the, but the uh, Treasure Islands juvenile, uh, like there's a lot of stuff like that that were under the juvenile banner uh, because mm -hmm. they're they they were written for young people, but not for kids, and not quite adults. But right. in that period there, which has been co-opted by um, the young adult thing, but they just they, what they I think what they've done was with the young adult they've tried to make them adults but they're juvenile and child childish but maybe with some bad language or sex so therefore mm -hmm. it's young adult mm -hmm. uh, if it's that simple well the teen section was where i got a lot of my books my science fiction books because there was all those old mass market paperback sci-fi and fantasy books in that section um in, in under that section they had like spinning racks with all those old mass market paper books and so i was always getting my books from right there so even then it didn't mean the same as it is now you know with the which you know which is like the ridiculous romance and the, the kitty stuff and all that that i absolutely can't stand <laughs> well, that's so even, good, even yeah. when i was a kid it was it was like it was a totally different thing well at, at, at some point like it probably whoever was running your library thought yeah science fiction is kids is kid stuff it's comic books so everything science mm -hmm. fiction and yeah, and stuff. fantasy too. Like all those fantasy paperbacks were there oh, as that's well. Children. That's children's uh, uh, fiction. Yeah. <laughs> unless, unless it's uh, unless uh, a certain author writes uh, the fantasy. Mm. <laughs> there's, there's some science fiction in there as well. So okay. <laughs> He always he, he sprinkles in some science fiction mm -hmm. uh, all the time. So um, I don't think I don't think I have on my list any other fantasy like more heavier fantasy or not. Uh, my uh, clip is for women in their mid twenties uh, to their early thirties, not children or teenagers. Yeah, see, see, your juvenile stuff was actually written for I think. Uh, Teenagers, like it was written. It was. It was yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can't be YA unless a three hundred year old 
is in love with a kid uh, who is what taking down the monarchy or government. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, I I just it, it's like I try like I like I've been I've been going through uh, trying to watch all these other old science fiction shows. I was saying like I'm doing the Lost World and I did the Andromeda because I left it uh, and I and I, I tried to do and I tried it on a couple occasions and I just can't do it. Is yeah, yeah. Is I've Roswell. tried. I've, yeah, I've tried YA too, and I just I can't I can't get into it. There's <laughs> you that i like but but the thing is these are people that are professionals now they're in their late 20s to 30s they've gone through university or whatever they're they're in a professional job or like a a, a sheriff of the town but they're acting like they are in high school wait are you talking about are we talking about books or shows no this is roswell oh roswell okay yeah i tried it on several occasions and I just, I just can't, I can't do it because it's like, it right. just doesn't work. It like, it, why didn't they just make them teenagers in high school? And that would have, that would have worked. Yeah. yeah, that show didn't even look interesting to me. I never even saw it. I never even tried it. Yeah, no, it's just like, like I say, I was just trying to catch up on stuff, and that's why for the last couple of years, because there was things like there's sort of end of the world types of apocalyptic series that were on. Yeah. Um, that was set what well, it was set in kansas a year that i watched and jericho? It, sorry are you talking about jericho yeah that's it yeah mm -hmm. yeah that was okay like you know i like i've been watching stuff like that and there's another one where aliens invade and uh that that was okay it had some interesting things i would just like to say there is no town in kansas called jericho that is a fictional town but the town is located near Hutchinson, which is like in the, this area where all the salt mines are. So I was like, I can look, I know the area that they're putting Jericho, but there's not really a town called Jericho. Just, just FYI. Well, Jenny says they are in high school. No, because the woman mm -hmm. that shows back up in the town, she's finished university and is some ge biologist or something is going to California to work. And, uh, and and the 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 other young guy is the sheriff, I think, or a police officer. Is there a different Roswell? Is there two different series? Apparently, there are. Yeah, because it's just because the the first episode is this woman's coming back uh, because she basically her father runs a diner or something like that, but she was sort of run out of town because. Some other young, when they were a teenager, when they were in high school, uh, her friend died somehow. Uh, and then there's these two, the brother and sister sort of, that are aliens and they have these powers um, from Rock. Is it, is it maybe going into a flashback later on in the show? Yeah, they do. They do talk about what's happened. Like it, it permeates um, uh, the... Uh, it, it permeates the show of why that there is happening now. I yeah, I don't know. It's just like a remake. I have no idea. I have no idea. I didn't know there was a remake or show. That I don't know. Interesting. I don't know. But yeah, it's just a, whatever one I watched. I just try. I tried first episode. I didn't like it. I watched the second episode, and I left it. And then I went back to it and watched the third episode. I couldn't do it. And then I watched the fourth and fifth episode, and yeah, I just yeah, it just doesn't didn't work at all. Well, yeah, you must have been watching this remake Jenny's talking about here. Yeah, it must be. Um, yeah. See, the... I don't. I didn't watch the show, but in my memory, it was all a bunch of teenagers in high school. Yeah, because they're talking about events. That led up to like the, you know that that was the earth shattering thing when they were in high school, but they're all adults now. They're in their twenties. Like I say, the one's a sheriff, and she's coming back, and she's on her way to California to be a scientist. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I I'll have to look into it then. So, 
because that's what I mean. Like, but 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 their mentality was still teenagers, and that's that's the thing that really threw me. They they were acting as if they were teenagers still, and it just it just didn't work. But yeah, there there's there's quite a few. Uh, but I, I I'm sure there's other ones that I haven't seen yet. Uh, because, uh, oh, there there was a South African one. Um, chart. What is it called? It's an ultimate world one. It was kind of neat. It was kind of neat. Um, there's like a uh, dystopian type world, and then there's our world. And I can't remember the name of it, but it was only um, one series that was done. One season was done, and that was okay. But yeah, I, I'm on lookout for more. So if anybody's got anything else name wise that I well, there was a show called Surface. It was only one season and they canceled it and I absolutely loved it. And of course the season ended on a cliffhanger. So I didn't get to find out it's something about sea creatures, but it was really, really good. <laughs> really liked it. And it was canceled. Yeah. Well, there, there was another one that I, I forget how, like I mentioned to you about it. I, I kind of liked it. It's about the laburnum uh, tar pits in LA <laughs> and it becomes a sinkhole and going into the hole. It's, it's like another world. It's like a, another dimension and it's tied in with stuff. That was interesting, but again, what was that called? It, oh, uh, it's about the, the the Burnham tar pits. There's some I can't remember the name of it now. <laughs> well, I that does sound interesting to me. Yeah, it, it's like, but see, the thing is, all these have interesting premises, but it because they become they've got formulaic structures for the show, uh, and then then they just get stupid at times. They're really cheap. They just have cliche stuff in, and that ruins it. It doesn't take it out of that. Uh, let's see. The uh, Roswell U, uh, which is probably the remake from 2018 called Roswell, New Mexico. Possibly. Uh, I just remember Roswell. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Anyway, I guess we've we've been on for almost two hours. Yeah, my phone's about to die too. <laughs> and we might as well leave on eleven um, uh, people watching. Okay. I'm plagued with the uh, with the number eleven. You are. You are. <laughs> it's hilarious. You I love all of our Vox, Vox messages that stop at 11 seconds, one minute and 11 seconds. <laughs> Just constantly. Yeah. All right, then. Well, I guess then I will see you next Sunday. No, not next Sunday. I have to work next Sunday. No, this coming Sunday. Yeah, so this coming Sunday, I have to work that weekend. So, But then the Sunday after that, okay. I, will, I will be in. Semi regular, then. Uh, Do what? It'll be a semi regular. Yeah. I'll probably just be working one weekend a month. I picked up a PRN job that I'm just working occasionally. So I'll probably do one weekend a month there. Jenny's asking, I think it's the 11 second thing. Do you do it on purpose? <laughs> I know. They're haunting Sean. It only happens when I'm talking to him. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and like, you know, that the. the my favorite city story and in the book that I was reading, I didn't notice until like the fourth time I read it in there. It starts on page 111. <laughs> yeah. oh, hilarious. It's supposed to be an angelic number. I think it's supposed to be an angelic number. Oh, well, hey, maybe there's an angel looking out for you. Doing a pretty damn poor job if it is. Depends on what you're, depends on how you look at it. Actually, in your circumstances, you're actually quite fortunate. So. Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. Like, you know, when I, when I see the stuff, like stuff that if the, the illnesses that I had, like somebody, somebody said to me, he said, I should be dead. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, you're actually gotten off pretty good. <laughs> All right, well. Do what? I'm not dead yet, though. No, you're not, thankfully. <laughs> Bye, All right, well, Sean, I will see you uh, Sunday after next. 
<laughs> yeah. before, and bye, everybody. before then, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Bye.